Hello and welcome. This is the next installment in my Echo Tar vlog series. Where I'm gonna go through all the books as I read them and then we have our live show at the end of the month. So hopefully even by the time, obviously by the time this goes up, my Echo Tar vlog will have been up. But yeah, it's time to start A Court of Frost and Starlight. I even bought this cool little like hairpin today because it reminded me of the Night Court and I'm like, well, I have to buy it now. So I have my copy. I'm like a little afraid to annotate it because it is like an exclusive edition, but I'm never going to really like resell it. So like, I'm just going to annotate it. Um, oh yeah. So let's talk about this exclusive edition. So there's like a few, oh, there's like a few exclusive editions that came out at the time of, and you know, like I wasn't in my super, I'm buying every single edition phase yet when this came out. So I got the, um, books a million one, which has, art by monolime art and i'm in love with their artwork Ugh, just so stunning i just think that they have such a unique style and it's really cool so yeah i'm just gonna talk through this book i think like i think like you know not a lot really happens in this it is more of a filler novel and i think if you go into it knowing that it's a filler novel it will like be better <laughs> so let's see it's about it's 230 pages right so like i'll do like a check-in at page 115 and then at the end and talk through it i really don't think that this video is going to be anywhere near as long as the other videos in the series obviously because it's a filler novel and all that but yeah so i have my tabs right here and i have my pens but a life update is, so I left my actual annotation pens in Florida. My mom has yet to mail me my stuff back. So I got new ones, but I had bought like colors to match all of these tabs. And now I don't have light purple, but the Michaels closest to me does have light purple. So I think I'm gonna go to Michaels first before I start this novel. So that I have the light purple because it's going to bother me if I don't have it. And I have a, my, anyway. Oh, and then also look like I keep in this copy these tarot cards from Fairy Loot. I wonder if anyone like has collected all the Fairy Loot cards, but like is an actual tarot reader and like uses them. That'd be kind of cool. Anyway, so this is Reese and Feyre, Emperor and Empress. And then this is Moore and Avril, which is Judgment and Strength. Those are the only boxes that I got. There were more that have more of the characters on them, but. I didn't get those boxes, so it's just fine. So I just keep these in this book. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited to get to this one just because I think it's gonna be like an easy breezy read. I can definitely read it in one night. And that's why I figured to read it today. It's a week before the live show. I'm being so much more productive than I usually am. The past two live shows, I have not had the book finished by the time of the live show. Um, basically because I was already filming a video today and I already had makeup on, so I'm like, well, might as well. I'm also going to be doing my Feb bullet journal spread i don't think i'll like film myself journaling because it's a very annoying thing to set up and i feel like it takes away from my enjoyment of journaling but i can do a little flip through at the end if i finish tonight so those are my plans go to michael's get my one pen that's like probably gonna cost like a dollar like the gas to get there and back is probably more than the pen itself do some journaling do some reading vlog and i do need to film a video so those are like my plans for the evening that's all for now and i'll catch in with you guys when i get to like page 115 and i'm halfway through this thing okay so i got to page 97 so let's talk about this and i'm just gonna point out like a few things that i think are gonna come into play in the future books okay let's see what foreshadowing do we have <laughs> so we start off and reese is in the camps and there's like dissent brewing we talked about how they didn't have the resources to station someone like in the camps and i think that like in the future book cassie and nesta are gonna go and be stationed at the camps okay and then reese is just like a horn dog and then just more talk about like how they're pissed because Reese and Cassian and Az, like they were actually the ones to send them to war and then people didn't come home from the war. Cassian and Nesta like avoid speaking to one another. So then Cassian, we get like a chapter from his perspective. He talks about like how there's like creatures that dwell in the steppes, but like that they don't know if like I was ever told of what it was and then he talks about like the right and Ramiel the mountain which is in the insignia and he talks about how he wants the females to train because of the way that his mother was treat treated basically like he she was like 
kicked out like a few days after giving birth to him because she was young and unwed and then he was taken away to go to Devlin's camp and then when he came back when he was finally like old and strong enough to come back like they just was, were like they wouldn't even tell her where she was buried and like, said all like the nasty things they did to her which was just really sad so he just like wants them to be able to have a better life and that's his motivation and so Feyre meets Racina and Racina's like come paint with us and we like know that Feyre's painting basically is like a reflection of her mental state okay then they're shopping for gifts it's a little bit of a fluff piece oh so this is something I think is going to come in so Feyre talks about getting her period and the Fey fertility cycles where you get two periods a year but it's like excruciating and that she's saying that Nessa and Elaine are about to get theirs. So I'm like, what if there's a comfort scene in A Court of Silver Flames where Nessa gets her period and Cassie has to comfort her? Um, oh, and then this is like interesting because I feel like a lot of people make this argument about like Nesta and Elaine and like how Nesta is so much worse. So they like Elaine, but they don't like Nesta. Um, and Farrah and Reese actually have this conversation. And Farrah says, like, if you blame one, you have to blame the other. And then Reese is like, Nesta's Lyrian at heart. Get through all the fluff to the important things. Okay, so then we have a chapter from Moore's perspective, and we get a flashback to like what actually happened when she was left outside of the Autumn Court. Which is very sad. And Eris is meeting with Kier, so we think that like the Autumn Court, or like at least Eris is teaming up with Kier to do that. And then as gives some information to Reese about all the amount of dissent that's in the camps and it's like way more than they thought. And they also talk about the fact that the human queens have not um, returned to their own territories and they linger in their joint palace. And also Highburn's general population is not happy that the fact that they lost the war. So that's definitely gonna come into play in the future. Oh, and this part where Azrael's like, I don't keep tabs on Lucy and, and Reese is like, well, why? And like because he's Elaine's mate and it would be an invasion of her privacy to track him. Azrael keeps track of everybody. But yet he won't keep track of Lucian or Elaine. Interesting. Okay. So if you've seen any of like the lives that Sarah J. Mass has done, um, she talked about the fact that she has to like, cut a threesome scene. And I really think that the threesome scene was gonna be between oh in a Cassian, Nessa, and this um, shop owner, Amir. So I wonder if like Amir's gonna play a role in the book. Finally, kind of gotten a threesome scene. So sad. Okay, so then Farah like was gonna go to join Racina in her studio to paint, but then she decided to go to the abandoned studio by herself and like she painted what she saw in the aura for us. So again, that's just like Farah talking about like her healing process from the war. And then Reese goes to see Tamlin, and basically Tamlin is just like a shell of his former self. And like honestly, he deserves it. And I think that Reese and Feyre and I all kind of just agree that like he kind of deserves it. And that's it. That's all I've gotten to at this point. So yeah, I will finish the last bit of it. Oh, and then we also get like a good chunk of, I guess maybe like the first chapter of A Court of Silver Flames in the back. So yeah, I mean, this is super easy to finish tomorrow because it's only 200 or so pages and we're running up to page 98, so, but it's really late, so I'm gonna go to bed. But yeah, I mean, like I said, it's a filler book. Like if you go into this expecting like the same level as the other books, you'll be disappointed. But if you go in expecting nothing, just that it's like a little fluff, 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 fluff side thing, you like, be okay with it. It's like a lot of fluff with important pieces of information that sets the stage for the future books and the series. And that's that. And I'm uh, gonna go to sleep now. Good night. Hello. It's time to discuss the last bit of A Course Frost and Star Light. Don't mind my ring light there, but I already have it set up and I don't really feel like taking it down because it's a process. Okay. So I left off on page 97. Let's see what happens next after that. Okay, so then... Farah and Cassian are decorating and everyone is like, who let them decorate? They call Amber in an angry snowball. Honestly, so many iconic moments. Farah talks to Elaine about Nesta and Elaine says she went to see Nesta and Nesta's like, I don't want to come to Solstice. You have your life, so I have mine. So then they go. There's this moment during dinner with all of them that Azriel like reprimands them for not waiting until everyone is seated for them to start eating. And like, 
favorite accessories like the Dujanan issue but then Reese is like it's like a scar to do with his mother I guess because like Elaine wasn't seated yet and she's like the motherly figure at the moment where she's like helping to cook and bake because that's what she enjoys so then they go to see Nesta in the tavern and it's just like this very tense situation where Nessa just like doesn't care and is like eh doesn't want to come to solstice okay then reese goes on a walk with more and he basically offers more to go and travel to the different lands so this is definitely like setting up more's novel so i think more is going to go to the continent in her novel and then elaine and Farah meet the seamstress who has the fabric void which is like the blackest black with the thread silver and that like inspires Farah to use her art as a healing and coping mechanism which i find lovely and then we find out that Amran and Nesta are like pretty close friends, but Amran's not gonna like tell Farah anything that's going on with Nesta. Then Lucian comes and he says he's been with Vasa and Jurian in the human lands and they call themselves the Band of Exiles. So again, like another little snippet that that might be a future book as well. And then Elaine is like, why do I have to give Lucian the time of day just because Cauldron said so? And I don't think like Lucian really wants to be around Elaine either, so it's interesting. Then there's the snowball fight. Fun, fun, fluff. Cassian calls Reese Reese, which I enjoy. And then Nesta comes and it's just like awkward. And only Elaine got her present. And then Elaine got a present for Asriel and it was powder for his headaches and he laughed. Okay, so then Cassian goes after Nesta to like speak to her and she basically is like, I don't want anything to do with you. And oh, it hurts my heart and then Cassian like has a gift for her and he throws it in the river so we don't even know what the gift was but apparently he spent months trying to find the perfect gift and then Nesta goes home and she's just like literally just like in this state of like depression numbness where she doesn't even feel anything then we have a little smut scene Reese goes to Tamlin and like is trying to somewhat make amends Okay, and then we have a chapter of more where she's on her private estate that nobody knows about and she sees this like creature So I wonder if that's Braxis or like something else, but that's definitely going to set up the plot of Moore's book And then Feyre starts her little painting business where like children can come like I guess art therapy That's about it and then there is like this sneak peek of a court of silver flames I decided not to read it since the book is going to be here soon. I want to go in not knowing anything well like i know things but like going in fresh so that's pretty much it i mean like obviously this vlog is not super long because this book is not super long if you regard this as like pretend you're reading fan fiction but official fan fiction that's literally what this book is it's like a fluff smut fan fiction piece and to be honest like i didn't mind it i feel like sarah j mass literally was like yeah i write fan fiction of my own characters and the publishers were like we can make money off of this and so they published it and I, I don't mind. Sometimes it's nice to have a little fluff in a world that you like. Because when Sarah Jamas has released like novellas before, like The Assassin's Blade and Ta Tower of Dawn, which actually turned into a full-blown novel, like those were pretty integral to the part and like pretty action-packed. And this is probably the fluffiest thing she's ever written. But I honestly don't mind it. I just think it's like a fun time. And if you just go in expecting no plot, you're not disappointed. And that's that. So uh, that's it for this vlog. And I'm so excited to be doing my Court of Silver Flames vlog. You can expect that. I'm going to try and get that up pronto once I finish reading it. But yeah, that's just going to be such a fun experience. And I can't wait. So thank you for coming along on this journey with me and my reread. And I can't wait for my official read of the new book. That being said, have some fun. Read some books. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.